Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to my kitchen. Happy Sunday. I'm gonna wait a little bit and see who is joining us. I have a tea, which is how I start every live class. This is my love potion mix, which is now the recipe and exact measurements are in um, my ebook, my gift kind of ebook called Made with, Made with Love. Um, but it's rose, organic rose petals, um, elderberry, and lemon myrtle. And it's bloody delicious. <clears throat> Say hi when you jump on. I'm just going to see. I was going to go live on both my Instagram and this, but I don't think that. I think that will just be too much for a Sunday morning. It's only 10 a.m. And let's just start this slow, right? I don't know what's going on with my face. It looks weird in there. Maybe it's the lighting. Um, so when you jump on, say hi. Tell me what you want to learn or um, if you have any questions, if you know what we're cooking at all um, or you don't know or you're excited or you're wondering why we're doing this on a Sunday morning. Like, Lou, it's, I only get two days off a week to live my life. Why can't I just go live my life and not worry about this and deal with this during the week? And I'll start by saying, well, yeah, live your life. Do whatever the fuck you want. But the question is, are you going to get to Tuesday night and go, shit, I really should have prepped something on the weekend so I was a bit more prepared during this really crazy week that I'm having and shit, I really should have done something. And I know for me, I used to do that over and over and over again. And that's what I hear from clients and people all around. Oh, I really should have prepared, but we went out for coffee and then we went here and then we went there and blah, blah, blah. Don't you understand? My life is so busy. And there's my little tea strainer. I just want to say to that, I get it. Everyone has a busy life. Um, or has things that they want to do in their life and maybe you have no time during the week. So when are you going to cook? That's like an honest question because we are at a crossroads. You have a choice and every day you wake up and you have a choice and you make a choice whether you decide on that choice or not. And it's either a choice to go, you know, this way and stick to the same things that you tell yourself or you have a choice to make a different choice that might seem a little bit hard and you're like, oh, and you go off there and then you try the next day and you're like, oh, oh, I made it once. And so you make the right choice once and you turn up here and you watch this class and you make this beautiful braised beef that we're going to make and it's amazing. And you think, gosh, that's so easy. But then you get to next Sunday and you're like, and you go the wrong way again and then we fall off that wagon and then we're kind of stuck and we go oh we've already fallen off oh I'm just not a good cook this cooking thing isn't for me I'll just deal with it later in the week even though you know that you're not going to deal with it later in the week and you're going to be stuck in that same cycle over and over again so making the choice you have a choice to go in a different direction hold on I need to get this rose petal out of my tea it's driving me crazy there we go. You have always have a choice. You choose your choice. What's that from? There's a movie and she says, I choose my choice. Someone will tell me. Someone will tell me at some point. Um, yeah, so you have a choice and if you're here, that's great. But whenever you decide to watch this. Um, but it's kind of what I wanted to talk about today as well, is that if you're busy and if you really just don't have time and you don't understand why you should cook and you can't see that you have to cook anyway and this is going to happen for the next 60 years of your life, 
And if you want to wake up every morning and have these same thoughts for the next 60 years of your life, go on ahead. But, like, shit, I couldn't think of anything worse for me. <laughs> I'd prefer to just make it a little bit easy, which is what I'm here to teach you today. So, oh, I should share the um, ingredients list, shouldn't I? That would be a good idea. I don't know if I've done that. Let me find it. Oh, you know what I can do. I have it here on a separate screen. So I'm going to start doing these live classes more often. I don't know what time, but I need a jazzy name. So can someone, when you jump on, say hi. I know some of you are like, oh, Lou, I don't like cooking with other people. You're totally in the comfort of your own kitchen here, but ask your questions because your question will help someone else. Um, so just remember that you're not alone in this whole cooking thing. Okay, this is a very long ingredients list. I'm just going to, I'll delete that bit. But, oh no, I shouldn't have deleted that bit. Jump on and say hi. Tell me what you want to learn and just know that if you're like freaking out and you don't want to cook with other people. Um, hi, Jamie. How are you going? Um, if you're scared, you're thinking that you're like the shittest cook in the world and you can't ask that question, this is the place to ask it because everyone is thinking the exact same thing that you're thinking. And I kind of just roll with it. I have no plan for this class except I know exactly what I want to say and that it will come out in some way or the other, but I'm guided by all of the ingredients in front of me that will start in a second. So tell me what you'd like to learn. Tell me if you have any questions. Don't hold back. No one will be judging you. Now, does that work okay? So we're going to start with our braised beef. I put a little post up during the week, I think it was on Instagram, um, about slow cookers and why they are just your best friend in the kitchen if you don't have time um, or you think you don't have time to cook. I'm going to get it up because I'm not going to be able to remember it. I can't read that. Look, I'm already distracted. Okay. We'll just forget that. Slow cookers are your friend in the kitchen because they'll take five minutes for you to prep something like we're going to do today with some beautiful beef. I have oyster blade here. We're just going to make a really simple marinade, which I have there. It doesn't even need to be this in depth. You can see on this marinade list I have the beef, sesame oil, onions, garlic, ginger, tamari, rice wine with vinegar, coconut sugar, and spices. That's a lot of marinade, but what you need to understand there is everything that you are adding in is extra flavor. Ta-da! This is step one of making your slow cooker dishes taste amazing and taste different. So I have here the Chinese five spice, which is you know full of cinnamon and cloves and fennel and star anise and Sichuan peppercorns and ginger and nutmeg and they're all a little bit different and in different combinations depending where you get your stuff from. I have this one, plastic. Does anyone know where you can buy spices in bulk, plastic free? Um, and interesting spices as well, not just, you know, the basic ones. So I just have this. And if you're ever wondering what combo to put with your whatever dish you are making, I go into the shops and... This is quite lazy for me to buy. I'd normally work with the raw ingredients, but you know, whatever, there's no judgment here. Whatever works for you, freaking do it. Whatever gets you into the kitchen cooking, do it. It doesn't matter. Like, don't even worry about what it is. If it's roasted potato and that's what gets you into the kitchen, do it. I roast up potato all the time and make chippies, um, but we'll save that for later. So I go into the shops. If I'm unsure, or this, you know, especially what I used to do, and I'd go, hmm, Chinese five spice. What is in that so I know how to make it for next time? Oh, star anise, fennel, cinnamon, cloves, black pepper. Can you see that's already different to what I've listed in the ingredients list there? Step one. So, 
Different flavor combos will make your slow cooker taste differently every time. So we're just going to make this simple marinade, five minutes, whatever. It could even just be Chinese five spice with, you know what, it could just be Chinese five spice and you could just put that on with some sesame oil or whatever oil you have, put that to the side for five minutes, which is what we do, and then chop everything else up and just throw it in and let it, let it do its thing. And then eight hours later, you come home from work the pub, maybe both, maybe you've been to work, then you've gone to the pub. Um, you went shopping all day, maybe you went to the beach all day or whatever it is that you're doing. Maybe you went to visit your grandma three hours south and had tea and scones with her and then drove back and you had this crazy day. But the whole time you're out adventuring and you know that when you get home, you have this amazing thing going on in your slow cooker that is just making life and kitchen burden and the fact that we need to eat as humans a little bit easier. So if you're busy, step one, slow cookers are your best friend. Step two on the slow cooker thing is they're not just for winter. So you can have braised oyster blade, beautiful beef. If you like eating meat, I will talk about veggie substitutes in a little bit. But you can have this beautiful beef and use it as a way or even a cheaper cut. So you could use just chuck steak, which is the you know, cheapest thing that you can get. It's very tough. You need it to cook for a long time. And this is why we use the slow cooker because we can use tougher, cheaper cuts of meat to get beautiful, delicious, melt away, melt in your mouth, amazingness for you know, a lot, like a, a cheaper price. So depending where you get your meat, oyster um, chuck could be 15 a kilo or, I don't know, 10 a kilo sometimes. Or if you're going to use these cheaper cuts of meat, you can actually buy better quality so you can get um, pasture-raised meats. Um, I think I just lost my train of thought. Halfway through the thing, um, Jamie, question, I don't have a slow cooker so I use my Dutch oven in the oven. Should I let this marinate all day and then stick it in the oven for a few hours before dinner? Um, tell me, Jamie, what kind of meat do you have? What meat are you using? Because, so I was talking to my butcher yesterday, this oyster blade is quite, like it's a bit tougher, it will take a bit longer and so it's also quite, it's in these thicker bits. I could cut this up to small diced proportions if I wanted to cook it faster. Tip number one, if you want things to cook quicker, chop them up. Um, you know, if it was a huge um, leg of lamb or something, you'd need to put that in the oven now. If you have diced chuck or smaller bits than this, it probably only need, I don't know, three hours at 150-ish. Is that what you're thinking? But let me know what you're working with. Brisket, one kilo. Is that what I told you to get? <laughs> this is what I do all the time. Oh no, I said brisket, shin, bowl of blade, whatever. Brisket, one kilo. Um, 180, 190 in the oven. Okay, that's up to you. So. Yeah, I think that I answered your question. I normally go for that kind of stuff low and slow, but that's if I'm hanging around the house, chilling out, not doing anything, which is kind of my happy place, especially in winter. Um, it depends what is up, what you're doing. So, and are you comfortable? So if I was going out and I was putting something in the oven, I would put it on the lower temperature. So I knew it wasn't going to burn and it would be safe in my oven, but that depends what oven you have because this one, you know some of them they have the lighter flame, like a gas oven, they have the lighter underneath. We had one of those in London and it was so scary. It was just like the whole under oven was <laughs> this ball of fire. Uh, I'm sure it wasn't safe or legal. So let's make a marinade and I'm going to continue, try to remember what I was talking about. If you can remember, Jamie. Remind me, I had step one, you're busy, get a slow cooker. Oh, step two, 
Oh, and you can use different ingredients to make it taste differently. Step. Just confused myself. I've done like four steps really in two steps. Okay. So I have oyster blade beef. I'll put this in now. I'm not going to let it marinate, but remind me, I'll talk about marinades in a second. Um, I'm just going to put it in and let it go all day in my slow cooker on low. So it will be about eight hours or so, I think. So I'm going to make this marinade. And the ingredients list is there, but you can mix it up. So there are no rules. And with a recipe, a recipe is only one person's interpretation of how it works. It doesn't mean that it is actually going to work for your taste buds. And um, what else? I keep looking at the comments and I get distracted. You can mix this up. If you want to put in two cloves of garlic, you can do that. If you want to put in 10 cloves of garlic, you can do that. Um, I have one huge red onion here. I told you to get two brown onions. Like, can you see there are no rules? Round about the same will give you, round about the same ingredients will give you around about the same results. And then once we get closer to eating, you taste it before you eat and adjust it however you need to with some of these flavours that are going on here. So like a little bit of tamari, a little bit of coconut sugar, maybe a little bit of rice wine vinegar or like a good squeeze of lime or something like that, fresh herbs. Um, I'm sure that all of these are pretty available to you in your kitchen right now. Um, or one of those, tamari, soy sauce, same, same, bit of sesame oil. Um, or simple salt and pepper. So I'm not even going to marinate, put these in my marinade. I'm just going to put it straight in my slow cooker, which is here. Just throw that in the bowl. And then I have this, my beef. And I'm going to get some sesame oil. So one thing you should know about me, I will give you a recipe there and then I'll kind of show you a different way to do it just so as you're experimenting, you can see that there are many ways to make this recipe. There are no rules. So about two tablespoons of oil. I'm just going to pour this over my beef and then about a tablespoon of spices. Hey, Kat, how are you going? <laughs> um, Jamie, it was on sale at Harris Farm. Awesome. Harris Farm is great for picking up that type of um, stuff. They always have cheap meats. And, I mean, I did a little post the other day. We did Plastic Free July, and it was going pretty well, but I've also found it can be amazing and it's quite simple, but it's just that change in your mindset. I guess it is like turning up for a cooking class at 10 a.m. on a Sunday when you could be out living your life and delaying the inevitable. Um, but I feel better if I go to Harris Farm and buy the meats that are on sale because <laughs> I feel like I'm you know, diverting something from landfill, but I'm not totally sure that that's right. But I'm in this weird place with the whole plastic thing at the moment. Sometimes I'm so good at it. Sometimes I'm crap at it. I go for a walk. I put up that little video. I was so pissed off because there was just rubbish all over this beautiful harbour beach just around the corner in Wollstonecraft, and it just broke my heart. And I thought I was going to do a mentor call, and so I walked past all this rubbish and thought, I don't have time for this. I will get it later, but I need a bag. To it. And of course, I picked up three plastic bags. So I had this big bag of, you know, a great bag that I just used to pick up all of this rubbish. And I was like, God damn it. Like, sorry, Kath, I hope if you're still on, I hope your kitties aren't listening. Um, like, oh, can we just, what are we going to do about all this plastic stuff? I'm not sure, but I'm committed. I'm just feel like it's making me so much more aware of 
my ba- my buying power and where I want, you know, how I want to see the world go, which I think is so true of um, what we buy, where we buy it from, how we buy it, meaning do you bring your own bags? Do you have your own produce bags? Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I've gone on a big rant. I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad that you got um, brisket from Harris Farm on sale, Jamie. So I have here sesame oil and the Chinese five spice, and I'm just dipping it in. And you'll see that, like, this is a bit dirty, but I'm not doing anything special. I'll give you a tour of my kitchen in a second as well, or I'll try to. Um, There's nothing special going on here. It gets messy, you know. My kitchen will be messy. There's things everywhere. The oven's going off. Um, It's a normal kitchen. I'm not, you know, I'm nothing special. I'm just a girl in here who loves food, who realises that the way out of our, a lot of our health problems and a way to make us happier, healthier, and then in turn wealthier because you're inspired to do what you want to do is realising that you've got to eat anyway so you may as well cook and being disconnected from our food is doing the world no favours whatsoever. Okay, this will just sit there and marinate. That's just the sesame oil and just the Chinese five spice I have here. Cloves of garlic, kind of smashed, kind of whole. I've just thrown them in my slow cooker like that. This is really a five minute job. If you wanted to marinate everything up, um, put the marinade together for five minutes, throw it in the fridge, leave it there overnight or whatever you want to do. The longer you marinate your meat, the better it will taste. But if that's going to stop you, I find this with people wanting to, um, I guess, get healthier at all. When the whole, there was that art of, when I started running these cooking classes, and it still happens now, but the question that I get asked is, I want to be healthy, but like, I don't understand what activated almonds are, and I feel like to be healthy, I need to be eating activated almonds. And it's just such a big myth out there because, To be healthy means to cook your own food and to know what's going in it and eat with the seasons wherever you are. And for me, that looks like eating a lot of vegetables. So I will, oh my God, this water is so hot. I try and eat leafy greens every day. I try and eat the rainbow every day in a, you know, as many ways as I can. Some cooked, some raw a bit of fruit, a little bit of meat if it's a meat day. I get asked all the time if I'm vegetarian. I'm not, but my main priority is vegetables. But I also believe in zero rules and zero pressure with this whole cooking thing and this whole eating thing and this whole being healthy thing. It's doing no one any favours if we're constantly judging judgy, judge Judy style, judging everyone for what they're doing in the kitchen. Just eat some food. And it can be as simple as you want, which we're starting with today, this beautiful beef. I think I've just remembered my slow cooker steps that I was talking about. So, hey, Katie, welcome. Um, let me have some tea. Tell me if you have any questions. I find that I start these classes with this huge sermon that goes on and on and on. And then because what I cook is so quick, I'm like, yeah, just throw it in and do it like this and then we're done. Um, Slow cookers are not just for winter. That's what I was saying. (laughs) What I like to do is buy meat, cook it in bulk. So that could be a lamb leg. It could be lamb shoulder. It could be a whole chicken. It could be beef, brisket, shin, whatever it is, throw it in the slow cooker, cook it up 
and then shred it. So we might have some for dinner that night, shred the rest. Maybe it's put in the fridge and we'll use it during the week. Or I put it into little snap cloth bags and put it in the freezer. In case you don't know what a snap lock bag looks like. And I portion it out into us. There's two of us. So I do kind of, you know, a small palm serving each. And it goes in the, free, the freezer like that. Sometimes if I'm lucky, I label it. Most of the time I don't because Pierre keeps on stealing my um, masking tape. <laughs> this is just a uh, wife rant for a second. I have always had the masking tape and the marker in the third drawer. It's just what my mum does and it's what I've grown up with. How's that for programming? And it's just always been in the third drawer and he keeps on moving it. And we're having this argument about where the bloody masking tape and the pen goes. And I just gave up and was like, oh, I'll deal with it later. But since then I haven't been um, marking my stuff so I get things out of the freezer. This is totally terrible. I'll tell you to do the other but I'm just being real here. I'll get something out of the freezer. I did the other night and I'm like I hope this is bolognese and I know everything is within you know a safe time. It's kind of within a three month period because it's just how we work. Things get cooked, they get frozen, they get eaten and it's just this continuous cycle but I pulled it out and I'm like I hope this is bolognese. I think it is. I think it's amazing but I really need to find wherever he's put the masking tape and the marker and put it back in the kitchen and just say, it lives here. This is it. So I will show you what's going on in my freezer. I don't know if you can see that. I just put this one in last night. There's many of things. You can't really see that very well, can you? We have pasta. I have a bit of... Oh, the other link, I showed you that the other night on Instagram Live. I have some chicken. I have roasted veggies that are just leftovers and I use those for, um, I put them in soup or in a curry or something like that. So if I'm like freezing a roasted veggie and it goes in here, I don't expect it to bring it back out and it's going to be crispy. It's not going to be, but I use it in a different way. You could even defrost it and use it in a dip. Stock. Um, I also have my veggie offcuts. So I keep a bag and just anything like the carrot ends or stuff like that, I put in my freezer. Oh, it's getting big. Put in the freezer and then um, I use them for stock whatever, so I might pull everything out and put it to make the stock for this. So, another thing that I do, which we'll get to in a second, I'm making a pot of lentils, but I make batches of these things that take a long time to cook. I don't portion this out because I find that if it's a bit frozen, this has a bit of freezer burn on it too, but it'll be fine. I just loosen some and take them out. So these are, I can't remember the name of these beans. And then I have quinoa frozen. So that's, you know, one and a half serves. Pull it out, maybe defrost it in the fridge, let it cook and it do its thing. So I don't really do this with meat as much, but if you have, if you're a big meat kind of family and you're low on time, Make it a ritual that every Sunday or whenever you want to do it, you just get a big piece of meat, slow cook it, cook it, eat some, shred it, portion it out and freeze it. That's kind of my step-by-step -step process. Um, we do this now but in a smaller scale and I can imagine if, you know, if or when we were to start a family, that is kind of the process that I would take. And then the... Meat is just taken from the freezer and you can do anything with that. It doesn't need to be um, necessarily that plain kind of stuff. So say I had leftover beef, shredded it, froze it. I could put it in um, a stir fry. So I'd make a quick pot of rice, chop up all the veg, stir them up, stir fry them up very quick with like ginger and garlic and lime and coriander and whatever else. 
and then I just take my shredded beef from the freezer, let it defrost for a bit, even if I forgot, you know, just pop it in a bowl of warm water, and then you just sprinkle that through at the end and toss it through, heat it back up, and it will be amazing. So I need to stop talking and get on with the show. Jamie. Do you have an eco-friendly version of snack lock bags? I love them for freezer as well. I wash, reuse them until I can't anymore, but I hate buying them. Okay, yeah, great question. I have this as well. And I don't know, we're in this weird place at the moment where so many of us are so aware about the plastic stuff, but sometimes it's a convenience thing. Like, am I going to make the coconut yogurt or can I just buy it? Um, Yogurt is a big one for me. Whole chicken is a big one for me. Can't seem to get it plastic free. Spice mixes are a big one. Even just sesame oil, like the lid on that. And I have a slight issue with the problem that these bulk places are charging us because I can get those products wholesale and I know how much they cost and that just messes with my mind a little bit. But I don't know. So... My, when my grand passed away last year, she just had this cupboard full of snack lock bags. And because I'm the cook in the family, I got all of the, I have some of her um, aprons hanging up over there. I have her tea towels and I got all of these snack lock bags. So I'm with you on that. I haven't had to deal with that yet. Maybe someone else can, Callie might know. Hey, Callie. Um, someone else might have an answer for that. Maybe they're out there and we don't know, Jamie. I might have a look on, I can't remember the name of that eco store. I know some people just use, you know, glass containers and freeze them like that, but that's also a space thing. Plastic-free chickens, yes. Can you get plastic-free chickens? I feel like you'll be able to. I love your conscious cooking practice. Thank you, Katie. Okay, so the eco people are here. Can you help us out? Does anyone know where we can get sprout and seed? Is that plastic free snap lock bags, Callie? Callie will know. Okay, <laughs> we need to cook this. Oh. So, make your marinade, whatever you want. There's some ideas there for you. I've just simply got the sesame oil and the spice. Um, now, make your broth, and this can be whatever you want again. I have less ingredients. I have a carrot. So, this is how I chop up my carrot for a broth. The smaller you chop your carrot, the more flavour goes in the broth, and the more amazing your broth will taste. If you're running out of time, just chop it. It does not matter. Don't stand there and go... No one, no one cares. That will waste your time. Get your carrot. Throw it in. Get an onion. Chop the ends. Um, you could put those in a bag in the freezer. Or you could throw that in there. So here's the thing, and I always get tripped up on this with broth. Um, when I put in, and Pierre goes nuts at me, especially if I put in those little coriander seeds, which I love to do. But then I put in things like this, which it's okay because they're bigger, but coriander seeds, um, black peppercorns especially. <laughs> So I make this beautiful broth and because you can see how I chop, I'm just like bang, 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 whatever. It's going to taste amazing because I'm cooking it and I cannot stuff up this recipe. I put it in but then I forget to strain it. So don't do what I do. Remember what you put in your slow cooker. Am I asking a lot right now? I could be. Try and remember what you put in the slow cooker and remember if you need to strain it and also remember that if you are feeding my husband or if your feed your people you're feeding are like my husband he might get angry at you if you forget to strain the black peppercorns out of your broth. Chop your onion. You can do two onions, you can do one onion. Onion it gives more flavour 
all of this. More of this equals more flavour. More of one particular thing equals more of one type of flavour over the other. So, did you know that you could put in cabbage leaves and cabbage leaves make such a beautiful taste in your stuff, in your soup? Hello, Glamo. Welcome to the club. Okay, sprout and seed is where we can get our plastic-free snap lock bags. So, I'm kind of working off... I'm already detouring from the recipe. If you wanted to make an awesome marinade, you could dice all this up, like I've said, and put it over your beef. But I'm not doing that. I just have the sesame oil and the spices there, and that's just sitting for the moment, bringing itself to room temperature and also infusing some of that marinade. Marinade adds flavour. If you don't have time for a marinade, don't worry about it. Add more flavour at the end well at the start of this cooking process or at the end when you test it and you know what things taste like. So roll it in. The smaller you chop, the more flavour you have. I have two cinnamon sticks and one star anise. Drop it in. I have some uh, ginger. Depending how much you love ginger, you can put in a lot or a little bit. Um, what bit am I going to use? I'm not one for peeling my ginger. I usually give it a very good wash. Many, many people say many different things about ginger. Um, even I soak it, kind of soak it and make it okay. You can... Peel the skin if you want, and the way to do that is to get a spoon. I haven't done this in a long time. Get a spoon. I think you use the back, don't you? Maybe not. Maybe yes, and you can just peel it. Can you see that? So, for the veggies. No, do it that way. You can't see that. Oh. Use the inside for the veggies in the house. Um, you could make up this just this beautiful broth with adding the marinade ingredients as well. You could cook it all up and then you have a beautiful broth. To that you could add some rice noodles. You'll kind of end up with a faux fur kind of thing. You could marinate up like a whole chunk of pumpkin and slow cook that in there or you could get some lentils and soak those overnight or some chickpeas some beans soak them overnight and slow cook those i chuck them in the slow cooker on low and they'll be done by the end of the day i'm not one for buying tins of that kind of stuff but if you were a tin person you could do that i would prefer to Actually, this could be your process. You could cook once a week a big batch of chickpeas one week, beans the next, lentils. Lentils are quite quick. Probably wouldn't do those in the slow cooker. Um, whatever it is the next week. And then freeze them off into portions, what you need for that week. Um, I think I've said this to Gloria before if she's still on here. Um, and that way, less waste going into the world, less tins, better for you. If you've ever tried, say, a tinned chickpea and then you've had a cooked chickpea that someone has cooked for you, the difference is out of this world. There is no comparison. They are not the same ingredient. They are different completely. And on top of that, you have... Um, in the tinned one, you have random ingredients. You have lots of sodium and things that they put in depending what type of brand you buy and it's just it's not the same thing so you'll get less salt less random funky ingredients less waste in the world um and an all-round better taste better product so that's how you peel your ginger and you could put this in as a whole chunk just throw it in you could chop it up you could like grate it with a microplane 
get one of these bad boys, grate it up. You could also, actually, I wouldn't do that if you were putting it in at the start of the slow cooker. I would do that at the end. So say you wanted like this epic gingery punch, grate this up right at the very end, say five minutes before you're serving, do that and it will taste amazing. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. <clears throat> I'm just going to randomly chop it. See, then it goes into how small I chop it so Pierre doesn't get a big ch chunk of ginger. Do I care? I'm not sure. I'm being quite evil right now, aren't I? I'm going to chop it into two. I'm going to chop it into four. <laughs> Throw it in. So, what have we got here? Great idea. I love a good foe. I don't have a slow cooker. You've inspired me to get one, Lou. Okay, great. Slow cookers are um, very cheap, so I'll show you mine. This is mine. Can you even see the dial on there? You can just see the low. It has off. It has heat, it has low, and it has high. That is it. None of this LED screen crap. Although get one if that's what you want. But this I got from um, a friend's parents. They didn't want it anymore. And I was like, what? Why don't you want your slow cooker? That's crazy. And I tried to talk them into it. Um, and they did not want it. I think they were going away traveling. I think now they want it, but it's too late. It's mine. That was about six years ago and I've used that commercially. That thing has cooked that much meat and that many pots of beans and everything. It's kind of insane and I'm so surprised that it's last, this lasted this long. Every time I put it on, I thought, is this, is this it? Um, it's Breville. Maybe it's 10 years old or more, but I think that they cost about $39 depending what you buy. I will say my brother has one. And it was like maybe Morphe Richards or whatever that brand is. And it was probably the only one that I've seen that hasn't worked. So there's some good reviews online as well. And I, uh, uh, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a believer. I was about to say price doesn't always equal quality, which I don't think so. But I'm also a Thermomix lover and price. So this equals quality and there's a difference. So there you go. That's my very contradictory rant. Is that even a word? Contradict? Contra? Okay. My mum's, I was with my parents for a week and my mum picked me up on how terrible my, um, I can't even get the word out now. <laughs> anyway, I said a lot of the wrong words in the wrong way. There you go, I'm proving my point. I agree, no tin things for me, fresh and cooked only. Well done, Kate. Okay, so what else have we got? Tamari, rice wine, I'm going to throw those just straight in my slow cooker and then the broth. Carrots, cinnamon, star anise, pepper. So I would put black peppercorns in, but I might just grind it up, seeing I've been talking about um, you know, making my husband eat black peppercorns. Water. This will depend how long you cook it. I find about a litre or a litre and a half is good. There's no right or wrong here, but what you need to know is with your slow cooker, um, you don't want it to dry out. So if you put, too, you know, too little water in, it could all evaporate and burn your meat or burn your sauce that you'll be left with. So I throw my beef in. I wash my beef hands. I then tip in this water. Via there. It's not even going to work. Okay, I'm going to use my hands. Tip the water in.
get a spoon. Scrape all this beautiful flavour in. Smells amazing. And then, pepper. And that's it. Oh, tamari. Um, you can put tamari in now or later. I've said that before, haven't I? I'm just going to put in a little bit, like a tablespoon. And sometimes I want two tablespoons in there. Sometimes I want a quarter of a cup. I kind of just do whatever is going on in here with my cooking mojo, which you kind of learn that as I said before, a recipe is only one person's interpretation. You will learn as you go and you'll be like, you know what, I want a little bit more salt this time. I want less salt. And that might be dependent on what is going outside, going on with the weather. So I'm going to put in a tablespoon of rice vinegar, which is really just an acid. So that could be lemon, it could be lime, it could be orange, it could be grapefruit. It doesn't matter as much. You could use apple cider vinegar. Um, oh, I can't put this slow cooker on. There we go. Sometimes I cover this with, say, some foil or something like that. I have a lot of foil left over from my catering days. I don't think I'll reinvest once it's all gone, but I am have been in this weird spot where I have all this stuff to use, so I use it. And with my slow cooker, this is probably the one downfall, but the lid just kind of doesn't sit on right. There's always a gap, and I feel like that gap lets all the goodness and the steam out, which can also affect how much broth is left in the pot at the end of the day. So, putting this on the slow cooker, turning it on, to put it on low and cook it for about eight hours. If you wanted a faster pot, you could chop up your meat into diced bits and maybe that would be six hours. You could also just put it on high and it will be about four hours or so. Any questions going on? I'm also going to, oh, the other thing that I wanted to say was, I see a lot of comments out there about um, broth. So you've got, you make a slow cooker, it tastes the same. Bing, we've done that. They don't, different flavours, taste it at the end, do what you want to it. Um, then you have the whole, well, I'm left with this, soupy stuff, what do I do? Well, I'm glad that you asked. You could make a fur, make a little stock. You might need to add some more water at the end, flavor it with some extra tamari or something like that, lime, everything that we've discussed before, um, and make it a soup. You could also just take that stock, put it in containers and freeze it for later. That is flavor right there. That is flavour for the next time you're going to slow cook something. It is flavour for a future um, soup. So I like to make like a blender soup where I blend up lots of pumpkin and sweet potato, carrot, onion, garlic, like I blend, um, roast everything. And then I'll take my stock from the freezer, heat that up. Once it's all roasted and heated, throw it in here, blend it up, and it is the quickest soup ever, and it's very hands-off. There's not much going on. Um, you can do that. You could also, you'll see in the ingredients list, I've added some um, arrowroot powder, so you can take a tablespoon of that, add it into your slow cooker stock at the end, give that a stir, well, actually, stop. I always do that, wrong way around. Get a little, <laughs> get a little cup. Put in one tablespoon of um, your arrowroot powder, then take a few tablespoons of your heat stock, mix that in, make a little paste, and so it's all combined, then pop that 
back into your slow cooker. So give it a stir, let it cook for about five minutes to 10 minutes-ish, and you will notice the sauce will thicken. The higher the heat is, the heat is what thickens it with the arrowroot. So you want maybe to pop it up on a higher temperature. You could also do this um, in a pot on the stove, but you know, for washing up sake, stick it in your slow cooker, let it do its thing, and the sauce will thicken. And that way you will create a nice little sauce to go over your beef, which could be put with a bunch of steamed veggies. It could be a bunch of stir fried veggies. It could be a pot of rice. It could be a pot of quinoa. And then so you have rice, beef, whatever veggies you want. And then you have this beautiful slow cooker sauce that is now all thick and amazing that can go over the top. So your whatever liquid is left in there, it doesn't need to be like a liquidy, sloppy, soupy type of broth thing. And what is there is actual liquid gold. Do not throw it out if you can help it. Okay, rant over. So, that will take five minutes to do, <laughs> or a little bit longer if you want to make the marinade and chop things up all nice and beautifully. In that time as well, I just cook something very simple. So here I have some um, beluga lentils. They're also called French. French lentils are similar. And I saw them called something else yesterday. I can't quite remember. These ones, these lentils, are small little balls like this, but they hold their shape. So they take about 15 minutes or so to cook. And they're perfect for salads. So I had these soaking. You could soak them overnight. But again, I don't think we should let this whole soaking thing stop us from getting in the kitchen, cooking something and eating it. There's always room for fine tuning whatever is happening in your kitchen at a later date. For now, just get in there and freaking cook something, man. And make it taste delicious, work on the flavor, build your confidence, and then from there you can help the fire however you like. So, about one cup of lentils to three cups of water or so. I pop that on there and bring it to a high, let it cook, bring it to the boil, reduce it down to a simmer and it will take about 15 minutes. So that's just doing its thing for a little bit. Then in the meantime, I get any veggies I want and I chop it up. Any questions? Is anyone else making lentils today? Or are you making something different? I find, well, I'm a big fan of roasted veggies. And I find that making a batch of roasted veggies as often as I need to really just relieves the lunch and dinner burden so much. I just keep everything in a container in the fridge and just pull out, you know, a chunk of pumpkin, some eggplant, a handful of baby spinach, a tablespoon or a quarter of a cup of lentils, a little bit of beef and I'm kind of off and away and I have lunch that is quick and delicious and cheap, made by me. I know exactly what's in it and it makes me feel good so I can go and do the good work and the good things that I want to do in the world. And really, like, how long did that take to chop? Throw it on a plate, on a roasting tray. And then I get some olive oil. I have this huge container here. do you roast veggies in your house? Do you do it at all? Awesome, Jamie. Do you have beluga lentils or another type of lentils? So I think a tray or two of roasted veggies 
depending how many mouths you have to feed every week is just take such a load off, such a pressure off. If I have leftover, I freeze them, they go into soups and curries and that type of thing. I'll smash them down and add them on a, you know, a sourdough sandwich. Not that I eat sandwiches very much. Or I'll also blitz them into a dip. I think it's just a great way of cooking easily and, you know, without having to go to a lot of effort. Yeah, I think it is. I feel like I saw them um, called black lentils yesterday, Jamie. Okay, so that's in a boil. You could flavour this, you could add some lemon, um, some ginger, garlic, herbs, anything like that. So I'm going to put this down onto a simmer. And I can never remember if I put the lid on my lentils or not. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Today it kind of feels like a half lid day. Do you ever do that? I roast veggies multiple times per week, typically. Yep. Great. Twice a week I roast veggies. I'm doing extra eggplant today as it's delicious leftover for the next day too. It is delicious, Katie. And I mean, make it into a dip. Baba ganoush, right there. That's actually another reason why I make all my um, all my chickpeas and beans like that in bulk because then, say, at the end of the week, I have some chickpeas left over and some roasted chickpeas left over. I blend them up, make an amazing dip, and then dip is never a bad thing. Hello, Jen Muller. I can see you there. Um, now, next up, we're on our last step. I have here some toasted sesame seeds. I toast them up in the oven like this on a big tray, scattered out. That's a cup there because it's so much easier than trying to do it in a pan. And I do it so I put the oven on for the roasted veggies. I put these in first about 10 minutes or so until they're quite colourful, dark, they'll smell amazing. And then I get them and I tip them into my blender. So if you had um, a tahini on hand, you could make this sauce with the tahini just by adding some extra water to it, hot water and um, some lemon, a little bit of oil and you'll make this a lot faster. But I don't have tahini. Tahini is just ground sesame seeds. And seeing I have a Thermomix, I just put it all in the Thermomix and grind it up myself. But I don't even do that because I just add the sesame seeds straight in here whenever I need to. So even if I'm making hummus or something like that, I just add raw sesame seeds and let the food processor do its job. So to one cup of sesame seeds, I'm adding one cup of water. That was a little bit under. And I try and make a dressing once a week as well. On a Sunday, so I'm prepared for the week. Slow cookers on, roasted veggies are in the oven. Putting up a dressing and then I just use this dressing throughout the week to go on everything. Absolutely everything. And then I use other ingredients in my fridge, which we'll talk about in a second, to change the flavour around so it's not always just tahini, 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 tahini. But I'll get some apple cider vinegar. <clears throat> and you need about a tablespoon or two. Or, actually, see, this is just the lazy way. I'm not going to do it the lazy way. So I said before, kind of acid is acid, 
you just want some acidity, it all changes the flavour just mildly. I'm going to use lemon. This is from my mother-in-law's tree. It's quite old. I would usually put the zest in, but because it's so old, it's quite manky on the outside, I'm just going to squeeze it straight in. I don't care about seeds going in here because it's just going to be blended up anyway. So if I have this dressing in the fridge, my theory is everything tastes better. This dressing will carry so much flavour, you can add in basil, you could add parsley, you could add mint, you could add coriander, make it super flavourful, super punchy, and then it covers up anything else that's going on. So you could have, say, a pot of, uh, a bowl of lentils, a little boiled egg or some beef, shredded beef cut up. Shredded beef, shredded doesn't even make sense. Lentils, beef, you might do some sautéed spinach or something like that and it's all a bit boring at the moment. Maybe you have some parsley, you'll chop that up. Yeah, it's okay. It's kind of getting a bit more exciting and then you have a dressing and it just changes the flavour of everything, makes it amazing. It makes like takes the pressure off because there's so much flavour in here that the other ingredients don't really need so much flavour, although they have a little bit and they all add something in their own way. And then your job is done. Your job is done. So, a cup of toasted sesame seeds. I like them toasted because I like the flavour. You can have fresh sesame seeds, and by fresh I mean raw. Untoasted, you could add some salt. There's no salt in there. You could add some tamari. You could add some miso paste. What other salty things have we got? You could add an anchovy or two. You could add, I feel like I'm missing a very major and very important one and I can't think of it. Can anyone remember it? I'm going to put this up just on a six. Okay, what else have I told you to put in the dressing? A cup of toasted sesame seeds, a cup of water, one lemon. You can add some dates. That's just for a bit of sweetness. Or if you have rice salt syrup on hand or raw honey, maple syrup. I don't think that'll even come out. That's going to be too difficult. I might just leave it out. Sweetener is optional. It's just a way to make your meal taste a bit different. You could also put in some cumin, paprika, something like that. I also like just a little bit of oil. Not a lot, just a little bit. Maybe a teaspoon or so. So I'm going to blend this up. It's going to be noisy. You could turn your volume down or put your blender on at the same time and we'll just make a huge blender symphony. Okay, I'll be back. Thank you. 
and we're back. So blend it for about a minute or until, oh, I'm not timing my lentils. <laughs> Put a timer on for your lentils. About a minute, it could be less. I got distracted getting all of this out as we'll talk about that next. It turns into a creamy looking sauce. Smells amazing. And then I taste it. Tastes like sesame seeds. Has a little hint of lemon. It's not crazy overpowering. Um, it could do with some extra salt. It could do with a little bit of pepper. It could also be fine just as it is because I know that in my fridge, everything that I just got out will also add lots of flavour. And this is kind of where the clincher happens for me. So I stock my pantry with all of these condiments, which make meal time so much easier. So I have my slow cooker on, doing its thing. It will go all day. I've just prepped that. It'll take five minutes or ten minutes at the same time. I chop up all my veggies. They go in the oven and they're cooking, roasting away to be delicious, to be used throughout the week so I can just go bump, 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 building my meal as I go. Also, I cook like one or two new things each, each day, but that might be some sautéed spinach. It might be some extra roasted crispy potato chippies. It could be toasting up some sourdough. It could be as simple as that. It could be a boiled egg or a new bit of meat, say like crispy chicken, whatever. And then I might also, on about Wednesday, make something extra like a pot of rice or something like that. So I just kind of build a little bit each day, but also drawing throughout the week from what I've already cooked on this Sunday meal. And then I get my bowl. Let's say, now my lentils are bubbling a lot. I get my bowl. Let's say I have lentils, some beef, and I don't want to tahini that day, but I might use some marinated goat's cheese. That's one option. The next day I might have some quinoa with maybe a scoop of lentils, maybe no beef, and a boiled egg with some Molly's mustard. The next day I might have a whole lot of greens that I've steamed up, say broccoli, oh, beans, asparagus now that we're coming into summer and I might put that on a little bit of toasted sourdough with some fennel pickles or something like that. Then I might have for brekkie the next day a fried egg with sourdough on avo and on top I might put some kimchi or something similar. Then the next day I might do roasted pepper pickles. <laughs> Condiment queen right here with, I don't know, whatever else. Maybe we're back with a little bit more rice, roasted veggies, whatever I have to use up. And this is kind of the way that I make everything taste a little bit different throughout the week without having to like meal prep as such and make a tray of lasagna and a big pot of bolognese and a bit of this and a big curry and have like everything, all this pressure on a Sunday to make four different meals for the week when I don't totally even know what I'm doing as such. But this is me. So I think if you have kids, you would do something a little bit differently. But I also do believe that if you don't quite, um, if you don't quite nail or understand why it is beneficial to get in the kitchen in the first place. Trying to meal prep five meals for the week when you struggle to even get the motivation to cook dinner every night of the week. I think that it is better to start off simple like this and then build up to doing stuff like that. So work on your little rhythm that you have going. Figure out why it's important to rock up on a Sunday to your kitchen to prep something, even if it's so basic for the week ahead. And then you can slowly build on that over time. Increase your condiment cabinet. 
So you have things in the process actually off you needing to cook such large meals. Understand why these bring amazing flavour. Then, you know, nail a dressing and kind of go from there and then build your kitchen confidence that way. Have fun, you know, make some whatever, cheese, sourdough if you're up for that. And then from there you'll kind of realise that Food can be amazing, it can be delicious, it doesn't need to be a burden to show up and cook and have some fun while you're at it as well. Oh, that was a long rant. Any questions for whoever is live with me still right now? While you're doing your things, I'm going to put all this back in the fridge. Oh, I have olives too. Olives are very important. And at our butcher, they have the scoop, you know, the big olives in the, um, like the deli container. So I just take my olive container back and get them to refill it, which is nice because they have the proper olives that are just in um, spring water as well. Any questions? So, this is one of the lessons from Kitchen Sorcery. I can't remember which one. We kind of rove in and out of doing things in there, um, which is live at the moment for you to join. So if you've loved this and you're kind of like, yeah, I understand how this whole taking the pressure off in the kitchen, making it delicious, having a bit of fun and just really committing to making some delicious food for yourself is that you can see how that's a good thing. Kitchen Sorcery is open now. There's a bonus. Three extra live classes with me and you and whoever else joins before I think it's next, maybe Thursday or so. Um, we cook. There will be master classes. So I can't remember. I haven't decided what they are yet, but I will share them soon. Um, we just show up in the kitchen together. We cook. You get access to the course so you can go through it as fast as you want or as slow as you want. There will be bonus live classes throughout as well. Um, you get three main recipe books and then there's another 13 guides to go through for everything from like seasonal eating, seasonal shopping, dressings, there's like a dressings, whole dressings and dips up. Um, and mostly it's just all about understanding that to cook is to be human. We can't get away in this life without cooking. So we may as well show up and make it as freaking delicious as we possibly can because I swear to you, once you remove the cooking burden from your life and actually understand a little bit about flavour, which isn't a lot, it's all available to you, it's all in your pantry right now, and remove this kitchen anxiety of like, oh, I'm going to stuff it up, oh my God, I've got beef, what do I do with the beef, how do I cook it, oh, I'm going to do this, oh my God, the beef is tough, oh, what have I done, oh my God, I'm such a shit cook, and all those thoughts that go on through our head, oh, I've been there, um, we kind of clear that away and you'll realize that you have senses going on with food that you didn't even you couldn't even hear them because you had this anxiety over the top of oh my god what's going on with the beef once you remove that your cooking mojo opens up and your world becomes a lot more delicious hey laws this is the end of the class if you have a name for these, let me know, but I think they're going to become a weekly or so thing. We'll just get together and cook and make it amazing and fun for all of us. We'll be like a little kitchen gang. If you're interested in kitchen sorcery, let me know. If you have any more questions, let me know. I'll be around. Other than that, I might go on a walk and I might go get a coffee and then that's me done for Sunday. Thanks for joining. Have a wonderful day.